Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left, or honestly, in this case, the abundant idiocy of the left, lunacy, insanity, whatever you want to call it. Think of a term, and if it's negative, it probably applies. We all remember this little Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez gem, right? And so they go out and they need to feed their child and they don't have money, so you maybe have to, you're, they're put in a position where they feel like they either need to shoplift some bread or go hungry that night. Crime was spiking in New York City during the pandemic, reaching levels that hadn't been seen in over a decade. In some cities, reaching previous peaks from the 1990s, let's call it crime crisis. And Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez came out and told us that actually what's happening is hungry people are stealing bread. It's not people taking advantage of loose policies and an opportunity to commit crime without any actual repercussion to enrich themselves through mass retail theft, thanks to idiotic left-wing politicians. No, it's just hungry people stealing bread. This is one of the most infamously idiotic takes ever released to the internet, and it followed up with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's conclusion. When people ask me, what does a world where we defund the police, where, you know, defunding police looks like, I tell them it looks like a suburb. That if we just defund the police, then big cities and high crime areas are going to turn into suburbs overnight. It seems as though that kind of uh, left-wing copium or that kind of left-wing thinking has now become widely popular. As far leftists heading into the election season are now taking that talking point and applying it to different areas in an attempt to make the argument that crime isn't actually going up. It's just an effect of the current economic reality. Let me show you guys this clip that's going viral right now for all the wrong reasons. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so this is an actual adult human being who said this. Take a look. About like what contributes if property crime is also down and burglary is awful, also down, why are we seeing an increase in carjackings? I mean, we saw an increase in the price of, of used cars and trucks go up by 40%. That's a very high number. I think people are really struggling to afford cars. And it's really sad because you see the main <laughs> contributing factor of this to be markups done by dealers of 35 and 65 percent. And you see them raking in uh, record profits. So as the price goes up, their profits go, go up as well. They're not just accounting for, you know, an incurrence of production cost. They're, they're just raising the price as a part of their regular dealership markup, and people are really struggling. They need cars to go get groceries, go to work, what have you. Uh, I think this is a huge misunderstanding of why people are, are taking cars. And I'll start with the fact, uh, with your point on violent crime. Across the country, yes, violent crime decreased between 2020 and 2023 for a variety of reasons, not least of which being the end of the pandemic. But in major metropolitan cities, violent crime is still up. In fact, in D.C., violent crime is up 39 percent. Carjackings have doubled, among other metrics. But on the issue of carjackings, the cars are not being stolen because people need cars to go get groceries. Yeah, so that's a real take. That was a real human being with a brain and the ability to see and perceive who actually said that. Carjackings in D.C. aren't up because of George Soros DAs and soft on crime policies or due to the general criminality that festered during the 2020 pandemic. Carjackings in Washington, D.C. are up because of greedy capitalist car dealers jacking up car prices. <laughs> You know, this is why it's so difficult to have conversations with leftoids who are constantly just inhaling copium through a freaking crack pipe, like some sort of copium addict. They simply have no understanding about honestly anything. You know, the perpetrators of these carjackings in these big metro Democrat areas tend to be children, like 12 year olds and 14 year olds. We covered a news story from not too long ago where two teenagers went on a spree across the city stealing multiple cars. Two sources familiar with the investigation confirmed that Tony was arrested last May for a carjacking and robbery spree. This map shows the area where he allegedly committed nine crimes in a six week period. News 4 reported he was 12 years old at the time. A carjacking rampage across the city. For the most part, we're seeing young kids just seeking a thrill, taking joy rides, stealing someone's car, and then doing donuts with it or riding on the curb with it, smashing it up, having fun, maybe stealing the wheels, stealing Stealing certain parts from the car, it has nothing to do with the macroeconomic trend in the used car markets. 
That has to be one of the most idiotic things I've ever heard. It's just young criminals going on a damn rampage, doing whatever they want, because they can get away with it for the most part. Or it's organized car thieving rings, who steal the cars and then sell them to, I guess you could call them car fences, who then pack them up in containers and ship them off to the Middle East or other areas, in some cases to be sold to African warlords, terrorist organizations. It's probably a billion dollar criminal enterprise, is what it really is. But the leftist reframing, the leftist thinking is, the criminal is the victim, now how can I get to that point using mental gymnastics? And that's exactly what you saw on display there. And of course, include condemn capitalism at the same time. It's the car dealer's fault. No, used car prices didn't skyrocket because dealers were greedy. Of course, some dealers were greedy. There was a whole lot of greed. But for the most part, they didn't really have a point. It's basic supply and demand. Ship factories across the world were shut down. Supply chains were shut down. And so there were less cars. Therefore, the only options you really had for buying a car was buying a used car. You wanted to buy a brand new Toyota, you'd have to wait 12 months to receive that car. And so the only other alternative to get something now was to buy something used on the used market. And so prices obviously skyrocketed. That's the way it works. And the idea that dealerships were making all of this money, some were, of course, for a short period of time, but for the most part, car dealers are buying their vehicles at auctions. And due to the increased demand, the prices for used vehicles at car auctions were skyrocketing, and so the base cost is up, and so for them to make a profit, they had to increase the prices further. We're talking about basic market forces here. Something that, once again, as per usual, goes straight over the head of your average, naive, socialist Democrat, injecting massive doses of copium. I honestly don't think I have heard such a trash take since the infamous AOC clip that I played in the intro. It's absolutely insane, but it builds on what we've been seeing from the left heading into this election season. You know, obviously the increase in crime in big cities isn't exactly a good look for the Democrat Party. Democrats took some serious losses in New York State during the 2022 midterms specifically because of the issue of crime, and so they're attempting to reframe the narrative. In fact, some people are arguing that actually crime is down. I have heard people attempt to cherry-pick data and make the claim that crime is down in areas like Washington, D.C. Take two seconds to go to the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police website. This is a government website, and the data is undeniably clear. Here are some crime data numbers in Washington, D.C. Comparing the year 2022 to 2023, homicides were up 35%, abuse up 1%, assault with a dangerous weapon up 1%, robbery up 67%, violent crime in total was up 39%, burglary up 4 motor vehicle theft was up 82%, nearly doubled, theft from auto remained the the same, theft other up 23%, and arson is up 175%, property crime in total up 24%, and total crime up 26%. The numbers are undeniably clear, and again, if we look at the 20-year homicide trend, 2023 was the worst year in the last two decades. Nearly 300 people were murdered in the country's capital. Let me guess, is there a rise in cannibalism because food costs are up and people are just hungry? And so they're roasting up their neighbor? Obviously, the most ridiculous thing you've probably heard all day, all year, but I think that essentially encapsulates how crazy left-wing rhetoric on this issue is. The criminal is always the victim. The criminal is always just the poor sap attempting to get by. But obviously that couldn't be further from the truth, and even if that was the truth, that these criminals are just poor and trying to live their life and trying to get by, how does an unfortunate circumstance justify preying on innocent civilians? There's no justification here. I don't care if you grew up poor and you had bad experiences as a kid, if you're committing armed robbery, if you're committing violent crime, straight to prison. Right to jail, right away. You know, it's not complicated stuff. And that's why we're in this mess in the first place, because Democrats refuse to imprison people. They refuse to actually enforce laws. Instead, coming up with these mental gymnastics, ridiculous arguments as to how they can justify crime or how to sympathize with criminals. I have no interest in sympathizing with criminals. Maybe after the fact, you know, you want to talk about rehabilitation, sure, but anything else is obviously way too far and just way too naive and crazy. This sort of the Surf's TV, Hassan, Emma Viglin style way of thinking, you know, they market this kind of rhetoric in a way that's so compassionate and insightful and thoughtful, but it's idiotic and in practice, it doesn't work. Crime is out of control, put people in jail, put people in prison. That's it. Commit the crime, do the time, please stop with the Opium. It's a seriously bad look. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.